Hello, everybody out there, and welcome. We got a very special event for you. My name is Jeff Dunn with uh, 4C Comics. I am joined by the forefather, Mr. Ken Carson, the man who makes it all happen. And we uh, are going to have a, a great time today. We actually lined up a really wonderful guest. We're going to talk to him about his career, his you know his life to an extent. Uh, you may always be a surprise guest. You never know. Um, but uh, without any further ado, uh, we could go ahead and bring in Mr. Uh, Mr. Tom Grummet. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tom, how are you doing there, sir? Thanks for doing this. Doing fine. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah, Tom's in a, he's in a lovely cabin he's got in uh, Canada, and uh, he's nice enough to join us for this interview. So this will be fun. We're just going to, like I said, it's just a casual thing. We're just going to talk about your life. And if anybody has any questions in the chat, feel free to throw them up there, and we will uh, we'll, we'll bring them up to you. So, uh, oh, let's see. We've already got a couple people chiming in. Hey, how's that going? Uh, and uh, let's see. So, all right, we'll just start. We're, we're better to start in the beginning. So how did you start off in comics? Uh, what was your interest in it? How did you begin? Uh, I started started drawing before I could read them because <laughs> I was just fascinated by them as a wee small guy and uh, just never lost the, the love of, of, you know, drawing them. Um, I was always fascinated by the by the world within those those uh, panel borders, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, uh, stuck with it even when I should have been, you know, even when I was in high school and should have been chasing girls. I was in my basement, uh, you know, drawn away. Uh, did a bunch of uh, work for some small press black and white publishers way back in the eighties and developed enough of a portfolio that, uh, uh, started going to conventions and met Ty Templeton at a show in Toronto. And, uh, he sent samples of my work to Mark Wade up at DC. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm drawing animal man. <laughs> nice. So there. Wow, that's great. So, Animal yeah. Man was the first book you worked on, uh, and and then how did you move on from there? Where you did you stay with DC for a while, or did you go to Marvel next? Or uh, I, I think you stuck with DC, if I remember. <laughs> yeah. No, I I did about a solid year's worth of uh, fill-in stories on a variety of things, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, um, was uh, offered uh, the the new Titans to take over as as regular penciler over George Perez layouts, mm -hmm. and uh, because I think he was uh, uh, shifting over into working on action comics at the time, moving into working on Superman, oh. and uh, um, three or four issues into. You know, working from George layouts, I was offered, you know, the full time penciling gig and took off from there. Oh, that's fantastic. And then, so I think a lot of people uh, know you from uh, the Titan. I mean, your Titan stuff was great. You did, uh, you, you actually did the, we're right around where we're drawing Titans during the, the death in the family when Robin died. So you were doing some of the not not necessarily the ones where he died, but the, the sort of the crossover, obviously, because Robin was part of the Teen Titans. So I know you were doing those books. I remember those issues and those George covers were were fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, and then so how long from when you were working on that till you moved on to work on Superman? Uh, I'm trying to think now. Uh, I think I did about a year's worth. And. But thereabouts, and the first and and the editor, the editor at the time, the group editor at the time was uh, Mike Carlin, who was mm -hmm. the Superman editor. Mm -hmm. And the first time I met him face to face, I believe it was at a San Diego Comic Con. I told him, um, "I don't care what it is. It can be a backup story. It can be, you know." Uh, part of an annual right. cover. I don't care what. I would just like to take a crack at drawing Superman. 
and he gave me a couple of uh, he gave me a fill in issue I think on action first then I got an annual and uh, at around about that point uh, Jerry Ordway was going to step away from doing the art chores mm-hmm. on adventures right and uh, Carlin offered the penciling gig to me and I I uh, snapped it up <laughs> I would imagine and it was on Superman for for a good long time oh yeah well, listen those are some of my favorite books so, yeah. I have I have several of them right here uh, it was it was a wonderful series so, so you were on and you were on during the most you know historic superman story of all time the death of superman you were drawing the uh the adventures of superman books at that point um and and part of the funeral for a friend and then you created another character when they brought superman back um the uh so so how did you find out like i know and this is a you know Louise Simonson has said this a lot to where every time they did a Superman meeting, Jerry Ordway would just say, why don't we just kill him? Why don't we just kill him? And then finally they were like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. So how did you, how did that come about where they actually were just like, you know what? We're actually going to do that. Where, how was, how was, what was your reaction to that? Well, um, I believe it was my first super summit which was when uh, Mike Carlin would gather everybody working on the Superman books at the DC offices to work out a year's worth of Superman stories. Mm -hmm. And that year we were planning a wedding. Lois, uh, uh, Clark and Lois were going to get married that year. Mm -hmm. And Clark had revealed to Lois that he was Superman. They'd gotten engaged, all that kind of stuff. So the natural progression was that year they were going to get married. And we were all gathered in New York to work out the storyline amongst the four titles. Excuse me. And I think we were two days into it when we got a phone call from upstairs uh, from Jeanette Kahn, the mm-hmm. publisher, to tell us that basically the wedding was off because there was this uh, uh, new TV show coming out called Lois and Clark, the right. New Adventures of Superman. And uh, it was felt that if they were married in the comic books and not married on TV, it would be too confusing. So we were not happy about this and because we'd spent, you know, two solid days working out, planning a wedding. Right, exactly. And that was in the bin. So we were an, un, an unhappy group. And, uh, of course, Jerry pipes up that, well, let's just kill him. <laughs> and... Uh, we all laughed and then then the ideas started getting thrown around it you know roger stern said you know i mean what would it what would ma and pa kent's reaction to something like that be or jimmy olsen's or even lex luther or and it just went from there right and So that's how it happened. It was, uh, we had to, we had, we had original plans and we had to pivot and that's what it was. It was not a case of, you know, other than this silly TV show, it was not a case of anybody mandating from upstairs that Superman must die. Right. That was us. (laughs) Ordway, actually. It's so claim Ordway. Yeah, there you go. Well, once again, in comics, nobody dies forever. They usually always come back for the most part. So they had, they had the funeral for a friend, and then they had the the which was fun as you know reading these books, and you're wondering what's going on, and then they bring back one different Superman in every book, 
and uh, you you had the Superboy book. So how did you and the the right? How did you guys come up with that one, or was that sort of did everybody have their pitches for their how they were gonna the character they were gonna bring in and stuff, or how did that come about? Uh, well, we had to figure out a way to bring Superman back mm -hmm. for one thing, uh, uh, other than just having having him sit up in the coffin and say, "I'm back." <laughs> We had to we had to come up with a story of how to how to bring him back, because we kind of painted ourselves into a corner by you know killing him off, and then uh, you know okay how you know how do we bring him back? And somebody came up with the idea of uh, um, you know after the funeral and everything there was going to be uh, like Elvis sightings, you know. Uh, Superman saved my cat from a tree. Right, he's back. back in the, these rumors that start flowing around. So, because we had four titles, we could come up with four different alternate Superman claiming to be the real thing. Right, and um, I think it was uh, actually the idea of a super boy was being batted around by uh, Weezy Simonson and John Bogdanoff. Mm -hmm. And Carl Kiesel and I were sitting right next to them. And he, he and I were riffing so hard on ideas about uh, the super boy character that they said, well, why don't you guys just do the super? <laughs> we, nice. We've got this other idea too, which turned out to be steel, which was, right. you know, of, of those alternate Superman, he's my second favorite. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it all, all came apart. The whole yeah, idea that's... was there were going to be four different, characters stepping forward and trying to reclaim the mantle superman and what it gave us all a chance to do was to explore the idea of what it means to be superman and why you know simply slapping an s on your chest and running out there and fighting crime is not necessarily going to make you worthy of that mantle yeah no that's wow that's like i said the, i love all hearing all these inside stories i love hearing how the stuff comes about because you'll hear it and i've you know i've talked to a few of the other people but there's always someone has like their little twist on some of the stuff and that's 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 incredible that's great um just so i don't ignore the chat i want to say hi to ronald and jason lee and then jason harris said uh, good afternoon he said i enjoy tom's art I saw him do a sketch duel with Alex Saviak and Jose Gar Luis Garcia Lopez a few years ago, and it was a lots of fun to watch. So, you got oh, and terrifying! Fans. That was <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> you know, I sit, sit up on a stage in a sketch duel with uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. <laughs> I was petrified, but he was he was amazing. Oh. No, he's he's definitely a legend in the business. Oh wow! Uh, so, all right, so you also did after so after the Superman, we all everybody kind of knows how that all he came back and Superboy stayed around for a while and he's cool, cool character. I, lo I love the leather jacket and the shaved head. I loved what you did with his look. You know, it was very '90s. It fit right in with <coughs> with all that. Yeah. Um, and, and then after Superman, you worked like then, then after they of course killed off Superman and brought him back, they broke Batman's back and you were doing some of the stuff for nightfall. Weren't you that, that whole, uh, series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as if working on, uh, <laughs> death of Superman wasn't enough. Yeah. I had, I had a, I had a hand in the whole nightfall thing. Right. But working on Robin. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you that got was intense. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say so they, they're like they're not giving you guys. They were like, you know what this this upstart image comics thing. Maybe that had a little bit to do with with you guys having to kind of do some drastic stuff. But I tell you what, man, it made for for great comic reading. I think I probably bought every crossover to every one of those things. So 
So it did, it did its job. It did what it was supposed to do. And there were some great, great art, beautiful art, great stories. Um, and kept us all, uh, you know, really just, just had to go to the, you had to, every Wednesday you had to go to the comic book shop to see what was next. So, so well, thank you for that. <laughs> that's, which is the goal, right? <laughs> that is the goal. Wow. So, uh, so then fast forward a little bit to like, uh, in 2000, you d were working with Gorilla Comics and you, uh, you had the section zero that you were doing for image right? Um, with you and, uh, and Carl Kiesel. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, it was Gorilla Comics was a, an imprint, I guess, that, that formed uh, from a, you know, a loose bunch of creators. And uh, uh, it gave us a chance to play with concepts that we always wanted to play with. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carl, you know, more or less had this idea of section zero which was uh kind of like uh challengers of the unknown meet the fantastic four meet the x-files <laughs> wow and so we got to play with uh you know uh cryptozoology and flying saucers and bigfoot and all that fun stuff and uh yeah uh, we produced three issues and uh, and I don't I don't know if, if you guys are aware of this but but producing comics on your on your own is a lot like setting money on fire <laughs> it's uh, and we reached a point where we simply couldn't couldn't do it anymore because it, unlike working for Marvel and DC, you weren't getting a, getting a paycheck every month. Right. And just conditions, we, we couldn't continue to, to uh, go forward. So we had to put it on the shelf with three issues in. Yeah. So is there, did, was that something you ever tried to do at DC or was that something you knew that, that, that you couldn't do there or you wouldn't be able to have the freedom to do what you wanted to with it? Or were you guys I, even still with DC at the time? Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was still at DC, um, still doing other things, but it was uh, I don't I don't think I in tr I thought about it in terms of they won't let us do this. Mm -hmm. It was more like uh, this is going to be fun, and you know, just we just ran with it huh. as far as we could take it. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we had to we had to hang it up and put it on the shelf right. for seventeen years. <laughs> yeah, I it did. I see that you did you did do a web relaunch in around two thousand twelve, yeah. but you did you had like um, the 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 Kickstarter for it. Kind mm -hmm. of uh, did it bring it back a little bit there in uh, two thousand seventeen? Yeah, it did. We we managed to finish off that initial storyline, and. Um, but we've also launched a sequel and work is continuing on that. We were working away on that and then the pandemic happened and everything went sideways. Right. And we're about three quarters of the way through that. And sh it, we should have it done pretty soon. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So nice. anybody waiting for it, it's coming. <laughs> we haven't awesome. forgotten about it. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. All right, so from the beginning of that to the end of that, we kind of missed the whole thing in the middle where you worked for this other little company called Marvel. You know, right. did a, yeah, did a little bit of stuff in there. So back in like 2000, I think it was 2007, you did a full run on the Thunderbolts. Yeah. So how did you, so so what led you to go from DC to Marvel? Did they approach you? Did you approach them? Did it, was it, were you kind of, I, or you, you were basically sort of an independent contractor at that point or? Yeah. We're always yeah. well. I I've always been a, a, being a freelancer. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel approached me uh, to do the Thunderbolts with Fabian Nicienza, mm -hmm. 
and uh, I accepted simply because it, it, the idea was intriguing to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it just kept going. And it was the weirdest thing. Um, Thunderbolts wasn't, uh, as a concept, I mean, it was a bunch of bad guys, right. really. And it wasn't exactly the, the kind of thing that I thought I would enjoy as much as I did <laughs> when I was doing it. It was, and it, it turned out to be an enormous amount of fun. Yeah. Listen, yeah. So there's, there's a reason why actors say they like paying the bad guys more than the good guys sometimes. It's a, it gives you a little more, you know, freedom to do stuff you might, you know, never do. No, that's yeah. great. Exactly. Um, right. So they, and then, and then once again, there's a Thunderbolts movie coming out. So mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, maybe uh, you'll get a little pass to Marvel there and you get a chance to go see that thing. That'll be, that'd be fun. Put the guy who was on the on the book back. Weirder things well, have happened. My, my, <laughs> yeah. Well, my attitude towards that is comics are real. Movies and stuff are make believe. <laughs> there, there you go. I think everybody you, know, who reads you never know. You never know what you're going to encounter when you go in to see one of these things in a the theater. Right. Sometimes it's pretty good. Sometimes it's not. I guess it depends on what your particular memories of those characters are. Oh, exactly. Let's see. And we talked about this. Yeah. Uh, were there any big differences between working between Marvel and DC? That's still not. No. 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 No differences at all hmm. that I could see, other than uh, you know characters the, the and personnel. I was dealing with the characters. The way the way I described it was is uh, when you work for DC, you're playing with their toys, and when you work for Marvel, you're playing with their toys. <laughs> so, I got to play with the Marvel toy box and was uh, had a blast doing it. Nice. Let's see. I just want to. Bill Byers says uh, my favorite Superman artist of all time. So, you oh, got a fan. Sure. <laughs> There are a lot of Superman artists, guy. You should really look around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people like what they like, and, and like you did some of the most memorable issues for a lot of us. Um, and, and, and like I said, and I think it goes for your what you 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 really wanted to do, Superman. So I think that the fact that you really wanted that, and when you got it, you grabbed hold of it. It definitely you could definitely feel that in, in the work you did. Um, Jason Harris asked, "Are there any kinds of stories that you would like to work on now that you didn't?" haven't worked on before is there something um, i get asked that periodically um usually my my answer is uh i would really like to do a western yeah you know um but if i was to do a western i'd have to do a lot of research <laughs> yeah, right. So it, I guess it really depends on how hard I want to work. Sure. Yeah. But I, uh, I, you know, I always said, you know, I would have been a doctor if it wasn't for all the studying. Yeah. You no. Know? In terms of in terms of what would I like to do, I would. Uh, really comes down to it's it's really nice to do something different than what you know a you what what you're used to doing and. Be Mm -hmm. what people are expecting you to be doing. Uh, uh, Several years back, I did a one shot for Marvel. I guess it would be at least 10 years ago now. Right. Uh, And the one shot was The Black Knight. Mm -hmm. And it was doing that was like going on vacation. Oh, Hmm. wow. Because instead of drawing guys in spandex and uh, uh, cityscapes. I was doing chain mail and swords and Vikings and ogres and magicians and castles. And it it was 22 pages of pure fun because it was different, you know, 
I got to stretch a little bit. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah. so there you go, guys. If anybody wants to, to uh, get a great sketch that uh, Tom would really love, next time you see him, have him draw a, uh, somebody from uh, Medieval Times or, uh, or a cowboy or something, something not superhero. Uh, he'd dig his teeth into it. There you go. Yeah. I was going to ask him for a castle. <laughs> like, or a cow. Yeah, there you go. Have or him do castle. architecture. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so after after uh, Thunderbolts, you did um, you were the, you co-created the X Men Forever series with Chris Claremont. How what was it like working with Chris? Oh, Chris was great. Um, I I had ac actually worked with Chris on uh, the Exiles book mm -hmm. before that. Oh, that's right, and and that was a lot of fun. And uh, working on X-Men Forever, the idea for that book was kind of what if Chris Claremont hadn't left drawing the X-Men back in 92 or 93 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we got, to, we got to revisit those classic, that classic era of uh of x-men and uh the only the only downside to it was uh we killed off wolverine in the first issue <laughs> but we had we had no i had no wolverine to play with so but i you know i did have him for the first issue so that was oh, well, there you go. <laughs> but no chris, <clears throat> chris was great no that's great so wait, so who were some of your, uh, you, you said you, you know, you worked with, and Carl Kessel was a wonderful artist, inker, but he's also, I, I think he's a little better known for his writing, but who are some of the people that you worked with that you, you know, you really enjoyed the collaboration that you did with them on what you were doing? <clears throat> Not that all, obviously all, I'm sure there was a ton of them, but who stands out? Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, a lot of, the, a lot of them stand out. A mm -hmm. lot of them stand out. Um, Marv Wolfman and George Perez, right? Um, Jerry Ordway, Roger Stern. Roger Stern was great to work with because uh, when I when I get uh, when I get a plot from from Roger, and I'd start reading through it, <clears throat> automatically in my head the pages would form in my, in my mind. Wow. And uh, yeah. So working with Roger was a breeze. Um, well, I, that's, that's a, that's an incredibly great compliment to give a writer. I think if his, if his like plots are so good and you're so in sync that you can just, you're just mapping it out in your mind. That's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that was, uh, and we worked together on Mana tomorrow and uh, yeah, that, that was, that was an amazing experience. Um, working with Carl was <clears throat> was always great. Mm -hmm. Is always great. I, I think he's a genius. Uh, who else? Chris, Chris Claremont. Um, I've had a, a a ton of great inkers that I've worked with. Yeah, that, that was my next. I was going to say, yeah, those these are the writers, but some of the people like I. And I've seen some incredible people ink you over the years. I have, but I was always partial to Hazelwood's inks on you. I just thought that he really kind of brought out something in your in your pencils that was just like just gave them a little accent. But I mean, you probably have your favorites too. Oh yeah, no, Doug is definitely up there. Doug, and, I think Doug has inked more of my stuff than anybody. Um, and I've you know I've been fortunate enough to have. Uh, some real heavyweights ink me in the past too, <laughs> like like Dick Giordano and right. Joe Sinnott and uh, Tom Palmer. Um, just you know, it's mind blowing to me sometimes, and it's the best part is be able to work with these guys and um. You know, you hand something over to them, and when you get it back, it, it's better than you had even intended it to be. Wow. Yeah. 
Oh, that's fantastic. that's the that's the best part of of collaborating, I think. So, uh, yeah. Wow. So, now you won um, the Inkpot Award in 2015. How did how does how does it feel like just when you're nominated? But how did it really feel when they tell you that that you win something like that? That you you get that award and it gets once again. I know a lot of people don't they don't do this for the rewards. They just do it. But it's kind of like to get that acknowledgement. And, and have people like, you know, it's like, they like me. They really like me. <laughs> yeah, no, that that is usually, I think, first, there's been some kind of ghastly mistake. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was really nice to do or, or really nice to get. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, that that award has a nice little spot in my house. <laughs> it sits there. Oh, that's uh, great. And did you, it, uh, you come on often? Pardon me? Did you do San Diego Comic Con often? Uh, no. Uh, when I got it, I, I think it was 2015. Mm -hmm. I got the ink pot. I hadn't been to San Diego in 15 years. Wow. The last time I'd been there it was in 2000. And uh, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> it was a heck of a lot bigger in 2015. <laughs> I think they'd add they added a whole extra wing to the convention center in between. So yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. I went last year for the first time, and uh, um, I was with uh, uh, I represent Bill Morrison, and so we were in the uh, small uh, the small publishers group. Oh yeah, and the the walk to Artist Alley was you know <laughs> I don't know maybe. 300 yards which is pretty far actually but yeah you in all those people it was a 45 minute walk <laughs> to, get to get to artist alley and then get back yeah. to uh, the table if you need to it was it was crazy yeah. yeah no it's an it's it's more of a it's getting to be more and more of an exercise in crowd control yeah it's uh huge right yeah. so all right speaking of comic book conventions you, your next one you're doing you're doing uh, fan expo denver that's coming up yeah. next month yeah. So yeah. So if anybody's in that area or att planning on attending that con, Tom will be yeah. there. So yeah, stop should, by. Yeah, Say stop hello. by. Exactly. He usually has some some artwork there. You might even be able to set up a commission in advance. You can talk to the wonderful Byron Ham about that. If anybody has any uh, wants from Tom, I think he he loves to draw. So um, one uh, question I, we'd like to ask: Have have you ever gotten a crazy commission request that you would refuse to do? Not so far. Okay. <laughs> Have you got any crazy Not ones? Not so far. Uh, crazy ones. What? Let me Superman think. Superman on the toilet. That's, <laughs> that's one we've heard before. <laughs> Superman on the toilet. <laughs> I, had a, I had a sketch request on a free comic book day for Superman eating corn on the cob. I did that, that one. That qualifies. That's that's a little out there. Okay. Yeah, that that, that, that one's odd. Um, I do have my limits, I guess. I just haven't hasn't been reached yet. found it yet. <laughs> there you go. Um, Challenge accepted. There exactly. So uh, <laughs> just, just to hit the chat here a little bit, uh, John uh, Papa says I have a black knight from Tom. Um, uh, 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 Gastove uh, says that he he says Tom would have a blast with the the Dark Knights of Steel then. Uh, he's, you know, he would love to see Clark in a medieval costume. That uh, could be interesting. A little twist on your, right. what you're, what you're known for and, and, and how to put it in a new direction. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, yeah, Jason said it uh, sounds anti-Canadian. I must've said something that was, uh, that made you have to choose between people, which is very un-Canadian, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, uh, the, Kerry Gamble is in the uh, chat. He says hi with his wonderful George Reeves Superman wink right there. So it's a very special hi to Mr. Kerry Gamble. Hey, Kerry. Been a long time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else? What we got here? Oh, uh, uh, Lee wanted to know if you're coming to California anytime soon. Uh, not on my schedule for this year. Um, I would say bug your local convention organizer there you go try and set that up <laughs> oh wait a minute wait a minute might be doing san francisco this 
this year at the end of the year. But oh, we'll yeah. see. There Just you go. Black, Black Friday. Right. Yeah. 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 So there you go. If he does do that show, you heard it here first. Right. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Jason Harris says killing Wolverine first is very anti Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. No, Lee says, I have about five nice example uh, samples of, of Tom's work in my gallery, and two Superman pages are my favorite. Well, that's nice. Nice. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you collect art yourself from any artists that you admire or anything? Uh, well, no. Uh, mostly because I don't have the room. <laughs> um, I do have a few pieces um, from a few guys uh, from I have uh, like from my uh, colleagues on the Superman titles, I have one page from each of those guys. I've got a Dan Jurgens, mm -hmm. a John Bogdanov, uh, a Butch Geis. And yeah. And I, a few other pieces that I, I picked up um, when I started getting back into the convention thing. Mm -hmm. I've got Riley Rossmo Bizarro Supergirl with crazy eyes that I just love. <laughs> so yeah um but no i don't i don't i don't collect like many of you fine yeah, people yeah, like. exactly by by the people yeah people i got stacks are probably stacks watching right now we have a bit of uh, addicts of the yeah ah oh. well i'm sure people would love to have a, a crack at those stacks too but <laughs> that's a that's a different kind of show <laughs> it is. totally for sure yeah um Oh shoot! I was going to say something and I forgot. Um, uh, um, would, is, have you ever written comics or anything like that? Stepped out of the penciler mode? Um, you know, like I know uh, Bill Morrison, for instance. Uh, he likes. He's starting to like to ink. So he, you know, if I give him some pencils from somebody, he's like, "Oh, I don't want to ink that because he penciled for so long." You know, it's like it's it's, right. it's a step away from what he normally does and. Um, so, uh, yeah, outside the school house, you know, do you, do you like any of those other aspects? Uh, well, as, as for writing, um, v very early, just prior to breaking in, I was writing and drawing my own project. And what I discovered there is that writing is very, very, very hard. Mm. Um, so... I have an enormous respect for writers. And uh, as a penciler, uh, I tended to, you know, stay away from the inking side of things, mostly because I'm too slow. <laughs> I agonize too much over it because it's permanent. Whatever line I lay down is permanent. So it's very intimidating to me. Um, I do ink my own commissions because I feel I can. Um, and in the past, I, I think there's one issue of New Titans I did that I inked. And uh, fortunately, it was very simple. So <laughs> I, could, I could get away with it. A lot of but, you know, um <laughs> I've gotten to the point now where I'm starting to enjoy inking more not to the point where i you know i do any sequentials i think i'd lose my mind if i had to ink a full comic book page <laughs> covers and covers and commissions are fine but yeah. uh yeah no oh. but yeah i'm i'm slowly getting over uh, the fear of doing that i'm i'm very interested in lettering and lettering and might try to do some of that oh that's fantastic I'm relatively i'm relatively neat about doing it so who knows you may have a may have a second career built in there right you know yeah who knows <laughs> hey listen stan sakai who would who would I, I would have never known if i hadn't if he hadn't told me that he was he was the letterer for all of the uh spider-man 
uh, dailies for Stan not Lee. All, not all of them, but for a certain amount well, of years. For, yeah. for, a, for a, a very large amount of years, he did I all have... of the lettering. Wow. And, and, I, and actually, uh, 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 again, I keep bigger up Bill, but because he, he tells me so many stories, um, they were doing a, an issue of Bongo Comics. I think it was Treehouse of Horrors, and they wanted Stan to ink it and, or um, letter it. And he said he didn't have time, but he would create a font. So he created a lettered font that Bongo actually has. So, yeah. So, so there Stan's you go. <laughs> there's a Stan's the Kai font for, for lettering. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. But once again, these are the stories we hear by talking to people that you never, ever would have yeah. known. Yeah. And Mike Royer told me uh, we were talking about lettering one time. And he said that uh, he was really struggling with it until somebody told him, just draw the letter instead of trying to write it. Just pretend you're drawing. And so that's the approach he took. And he said he was able to letter much better that way. <laughs> instead of thinking of it, writing it as a, a letter, he was drawing the letter. So, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess you have to play little little Jedi mind tricks on yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, tricks in a trade, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know the question I forgot I was going to ask you earlier. So you said you were a huge Superman fan. Who was your favorite Superman artist? You can you can go from before you started drawing if you don't want to pick anybody from uh, um, you know the times when you were or after. Okay, um, when I was really 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 young, uh, it would have been Kurt Swan. Mm -hmm. uh, before I even knew who Kurt Swan was, because they didn't get credited back then. Right. Um, and I guess if you were to ask me who, what guy draws the best Superman, ah. it would have to be Jose Luis Garcia Lopez for me. Wow. I started seeing his Superman stuff and he, he, he did quite a bit, but nowhere near enough as far as I was concerned. Um, when I, when, I think I was in high school when I started seeing his, uh, his Superman work and it was mind blowing to me. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So that's always in the back of my mind when, when, I, well, from the first time I sat down to draw a Superman page, he was kind of haunting me a little bit. <laughs> so. Inspiring. Yeah, yeah. Let's say, exactly. I mean, that's a good guy to emulate. He's like I said, he's one of the there's there's so many people who have drawn Superman over the years. And there's so many, you know, they, they each hit someone in that sweet spot. So I can, you know, I think I think you're right. I think, yeah, I think him, you know, some people would say Neil Adams. Some people, you know, even love the John Byrne stuff. It all depends on, I guess, where you were and what what kind of gra grabbed you and what you gravitated towards. But that's that is an, yeah. an exceptional choice. I think I think you did good with that one. Yeah, he does draw. A pretty amazing and, and the thing about the th thing about Jose is it doesn't matter what character he's drawing it's always perfect um you look at the style guide stuff he did his green arrow absolutely looks like green arrow aquaman you name the character mm -hmm. he just nails it yeah every single time wow uh, so Ace Wonder is in the chat and says, uh, love the Titans run, especially the Titans hunt storyline. I have a few nice pages from that and the adventures of Superman, uh, my favorite artist after Perez looking forward to more section zero. So it's coming. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. I have some pages on my board right now. Yeah. Yep. And then Ren Ren Ronaldo says, does Tom ever do commissions? Or yeah. Do I Oh yeah, he's been known to do a couple, yeah, a few, a few yeah. hundred or so. <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, contact my rep Byron for those. Right, uh, Byron Ham. He is a, he is on uh, on uh, Messenger, guys. If you guys have the Facebook, you can hit him up that way. Or um, I'm sure if you just uh, put out some feelers, somebody can can put you in touch with them. And like we said, Tom's going to be at uh, Denver uh, Fan Expo Denver coming up next month, and uh, quite possibly at Sandy at, at San Francisco towards the end of the year and you never know where else you might catch him but he definitely does commissions i'm going to take this point to show off the wonderful commission that i have and you guys can check out this gorgeous oh, okay i remember that that's amazing and then i was lucky enough to have once again doug hazelwood inked it for me and 
and it's yeah, it's what it's one of my favorite pieces of my collection. I did I did remove the mullet if any before anybody nice. typed. I did I did ask him not to mullet him up like the actual cover, but <laughs> throw that back there. All right. Oh yeah. Are there any characters you you haven't worked Sorry. with that you would like to? Oh, say that again, Tom. Oh, I not uh, no. I sorry. Uh, no, you're good. You can you have a question? Oh, I, I was just asking. Are there any characters that you would love to draw that you haven't gotten a chance to? Uh, I think I've drawn them all. <laughs> there you go. I think, yeah, no, I, I think it's 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 gotten to the point of being a drinking game na now. Um, <laughs> name a character I haven't drawn. <laughs> so, no, I've drawn uh, practically between Marvel and DC. I've drawn pretty much all the characters. Yeah, and when you throw commissions in there too, I'm sure that you've if, if whatever some of the ones you missed, you might have probably knocked out in those. Yeah, no, I, occasionally I get I get surprised uh, with a few mm -hmm. uh, doing sketches at shows. Um, one show, I think it was. Florida Megacon guy wanted a ROM Space Knight. And that was exciting because no one had ever asked me for a ROM Space Knight. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's checked off the list. There you go. Yeah. Peter Rose has a question. He wanted to know, would you be interested in drawing a war comic like one written by Garth Enos? Something like that. I think it would depend. Um, I guess it would depend on the story. Uh, first, the story has to grab me. I have to have a a way of getting into it. Uh, but once again, it it's also a case of there's an awful lot of research involved. Mm -hmm. So, right. Let's yeah, see. no, I, I'm I'm pretty much open to entertaining any genre as you know as long as it grabs me in some way right story has to be there something you yeah. have to, that catches your interest now yeah so oh, jason wanted to throw out have you ever drawn the silver surfer i think i already know the answer to this <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i believe that that uh, that was a title i did for marvel for Pretty close to a year. Yeah. <laughs> Do Jack your research, Park. Jason. Jack of Hearts battling Galactus. There you go. That, that's that's the commission right there to, to put 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 you. <laughs> Oof. Do you have a character you don't like to draw? We we, we say we we joke around about that because we almost get a universal Galactus or Jack of Hearts from <laughs> just about every creator we talk to. Let me see. Jack of Hearts would be uh, a chore. Tedious. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. Um, uh, doing a one-off commission of Jack of Hearts, okay, that'd be one thing. Draw <laughs> draw an ongoing series for five years. Uh, I'd, I'd have to think about that one. <laughs> I think they actually changed his costume. Uh, yeah, I think people were just like, "Yeah, if you're going to bring this guy back, he can't wear that costume anymore. It doesn't work." Yeah, uh, no, just just put a, just put a big J and a heart on his chest, and that's good. <laughs> be done with it. There you go. Be done with oh, it. There you go. Um, and, oh, so EC wants to know: Is there a book you passed working on but later regretted passing on it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well, there's a simple answer. No. Um, for a lot of my career, it was, well, especially early on, uh, especially when I first broke in. Um, I was so uh, overcome with imposter syndrome that <laughs> no matter what it was they asked me to do, the answer was always yes. <laughs> for fear that if I said no, they'd never ask again. So... So that was more or less <laughs> my approach for at least the uh, good
good two thirds of my career. <laughs> oh yeah. So JC says, uh, hi Tom and guys, uh, what was the most memorable run of your career and, and why? Out of all the stuff you've done, Teen Titans, the, the Marvel stuff, the, obviously the Superman, the, all, all of it, Section Zero. What's, what's the most memorable and why do you think it's it like is the one that means the most to you, sort of? I think, the, I think my Superman run. Um, and, not, it, and Death of Superman notwithstanding, it was uh, working with those people, with that team. Mm-hmm. Um, that evoked the most memories for me. You know, working with John Bogdanov and Wheezy and Ordway and Roger Stern and, and Dan, Brad, and Carlin, and and all those people. Um, yeah, it's like a who's who. It's a legendary team of creators. Yeah, yeah and it was... Uh, they were just so much, they were just great people. So yeah. that's, if you want memorable, root word memories, that's the one. Wow. Well, I think, I think that is like the best way to end this interview and, and, uh, and finish it up. And thank you so much, Tom, for gracing us with your presence and being on here and letting me just jabber on about your career, which is an incredible one and what you've given to comics and, and art and to all the people who are here watching, you know, I think they'll all agree that, um, that it meant a lot to a lot of us just, you know, when your books would come out and, and collecting them and reading them and seeing what you do next. And, and we look forward to seeing what you do next. I know you're working on something, but mom's the word, yeah. right? Yeah. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Yeah. And I, I like to live, <laughs> so I'm not going to, I don't want you to tell me. But I would like to thank Tom and uh, thank everybody uh, who joined us in the chat and everybody who's watching this after the fact for uh, for hanging out with us. And uh, please uh, check out everything that's going on. There's lots of great panels today. Check out the ones that were from yesterday. Go to people's booths and buy art and sell art and uh, and come say hi to us if you ever see us at a show. Our next show is going to be at uh, Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina. Be, and as you know, Philly. Uh, oh, we'll be in. That's right, Philly. That's first weekend, first week of June, uh, Philly. Ken's going to be there with uh, with Chris Bacon. So uh, go say hi to them. And then we'll all be at Heroes. And Tom's going to be at uh, Denver. So say hi to us. Say hi to Tom. And thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful night. And uh, we'll see you soon.